So, Pap, of course, we have uh, the uh, the big New York primary had taking place in just uh, days from now. And uh, this is one that has a uh, huge stakes for both uh, for both parties. Uh, if uh, Donald Trump uh, does a, a big sweep here in New York, it gives him uh, some momentum going into Pennsylvania. And uh, I think to a large extent, you know, even though he's lost some delegates, he's got um, the still uh, very much so the inside track. On the Democratic side, this is a a must win for Bernie Sanders, and he's got to win with a fairly sizable margin. And it's tough because uh, polls, he's been closing, but he's not quite there yet. Um, And, you know, one of the big issues is going to be if he doesn't win in New York, there's going to be increasing pressure uh, for him to uh, to get out of the race. Uh, And there's going to be this argument that somehow his being in the race somehow hurts Hillary Clinton. I don't buy it. Uh, give me your take. Well, there's this this party unity nonsense that's kicking around out there, and that is, oh, my gosh, if Bernie argues with Hillary, it's causing us such harm. And the, it's, it's what it is, it's kind of a it's a it's a childish idealism. Idealism. I mean, it's a, you know, the we got to rally around Hillary because she's the sensible selection, she's the electable selection. And in that discussion, we miss the fact that the, the, the Democratic Party is dying. The Democratic Party is no longer anything that even that we can recognize as a Democratic Party. For all purposes, it's the Republican Party of uh, 20 years ago. So, I mean, this idea that we have to mellow the tone and we have to to, to make our disagreements disappear and that... Uh, that the people who don't do that are simply tools of the Republican Party. Uh, you know, we've got to, we have to stop that kind of stupid talk because the truth is, if this discussion about the division in the in the Democratic Party does not continue, uh, the Democratic Party is not long for this world. Which, frankly, may be fine with me. I'm an independent. I don't. I think that I think you can produce better with an independent candidate anyway. Which leads me to the next point. I, I would love to see uh, the only way Bernie really can run as an independent is if Trump runs as an independent. And right now, that's a very big possibility. But uh, nothing would be uh, would 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 be more important to the democratic process than to have the establishment uh, candidate Hillary Clinton uh, running uh, on one side, uh, Bernie Sanders running as an independent. Um, on the other side, you have, say, Cruz running as the establishment Republican, Trump running as the, uh, you know, as the independent Republican. All of a sudden, what you see is the establishment parties on both sides start understanding that, you know, maybe with a little luck, they are not long for this world because they have they're no reflection at all of what the American public wants. Well, you know, the um, I, I mean, I think in in principle, um, that would be a, a great situation. I mean, the bottom line is, though, it is virtually impossible for any candidate, uh, whether it's uh, Donald Trump or Ted Cruz or uh, uh, or Bernie Sanders on the Democratic side to mount a third party or fourth party challenge at a, really uh, around this point uh, because you've got deadlines to get on the ballots now a guy like Trump could theoretically pay off um, you know the some of these uh, smaller parties you know the conservative party the independent party in some states here and there you could certainly prevent i think um, one of the uh, either a republican or a democrat from winning nationally because uh, you could take out, maybe you could get on uh, the conservative party ticket in uh, in Ohio, say, by donating a sufficient amount of money. But I think, um, I think getting back to the argument as to whether or not Bernie Sanders is hurting Hillary Clinton if he stays in the race, you know, uh, around this time in 2008, Hillary Clinton, and I've seen this uh, clip actually of of Keith Olbermann and uh, our old friend Rachel Maddow uh, talking on uh, the late Keith Olbermann program on MSNBC about Hillary Clinton saying at the time, 
and I'm paraphrasing, but the quote is probably um, more explicit. Uh, she said, I have experience. I know uh, Senator John McCain has experience, but all Barack Obama has is a 2002 speech. And uh, if that isn't saying that she didn't think he was qualified, uh, I don't know what is. And it turned out that did not in any way uh, hurt uh, Barack Obama in the general election. No, of course and, not. And, and I think your point about waking up the Democratic Party, I mean, people need to keep this in perspective. Bernie Sanders was at 7% this time last year. He is now nationally around, you know, 52%, depending on what poll you're looking at. I mean, there is been, uh, it is quite clear that Bernie Sanders represents an increasing, if not the majority of, of Democrats, at the very least, his issue sets um, do. And the idea that he wouldn't take this to the convention seems foolish just in the perspective so the Democratic Party can begin to understand where their voters are. I mean, because, I mean, frankly, there's at least a significant portion of uh, Clinton supporters. There are some who are, are diehard Clinton supporters. But like you say, there's a significant portion of Clinton voters who simply say this is the more pragmatic yeah, choice. Yeah, it do, it and, never, we never get any better. You know, Sam, the irony of what's happening in the Democratic race right now is that Bernie Sanders' campaign is still far less vicious than Hillary was against Obama. I mean, the, 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 your point that you make when you make comparatives, uh, during that race, you recall Bill Clinton said that Obama wasn't qualified to be president. Her campaign repeatedly used his past history of smoking marijuana. They played the race card. They claimed that his supporters were anti-women, just like they're doing with Bernie. Uh, they're doing to Bernie what they tried to do to Obama in 2008, and, and it, it simply isn't working. Uh, when you add in the fact that the corporate media and now even some members of the independent media are taking quotes out of context, engaging in shoddy journalism, you end up with a campaign free for all like we're seeing today. I don't know that's bad for the party. Uh, Hillary's campaign is scared to death because they've now lost seven of the eight races to Bernie. They see their poll numbers falling in New York, in Pennsylvania, so they're trying to use every kind of maneuver they can that they have left to discredit him. Still, I don't know that that's bad for the party. He needs to do the same thing. Her her campaign is playing the victim right now, but really she needs to come clean about what her and her campaign actually said about Sanders and his supporters. For example, Hillary's implying that young voters, millennials, are just being, they're too stupid. They're mm. so stupid that they're being duped by, by Bernie Sanders. Uh, she thinks that this age group is just not qualified to vote, if you really th th hear what she says. This is the largest voting block of the 2016 election. They overwhelmingly support Bernie Sanders. That needs to be part of the discussion. Why is that? And she's not doing the Dem Democratic Party any favors by attacking this group. That's that, right. You know, so, so the point is there's nothing wrong with conflict in a primary. There's nothing wrong with that. It's what we should be doing. And these these people, I mean, the latest came from, uh, I think it was, you know, uh, Dana Perlman. You know, oh, my God, this is going to be disastrous for the Democratic mm -hmm. Party if Bernie doesn't get out because it's causing harm. Well, Dana Perlman is nothing but a lackey for the, for, for the Clintons and always has been. I think this is about the, the Democratic establishment and particularly a lot of those third way um, Democrats who have basically ruled the roost since really going back, uh, you know, the uh, late 80s, early 90s and, and brought us Bill Clinton, the first of the DLC presidents. I think they are afraid that they are no longer in ascendance and that the left is gaining a foothold in that party.